thank you so much, Dahlia, for meeting with me here uh, on this episode of How Do We Start a Startup, the legal edition, if I may. Now, I'm sure you talk to so many startups, they're sitting at the idea stage, they have this product that they probably built, and you know, they want to go and, and get the paperwork ready so that they can go get um, funded. What are some of those things that they should do? Like, give me like this as detailed as I can. The like, number one problem, sure. and I think every lawyer will tell you this, is Got that it. when you're a startup, you're bootstrapping, you're really excited, you get your friends on board, you might have done a you know hackathon or a competition, right. and the paperwork around who's doing what and who's responsible for what and who is going to earn what is very, uh, either doesn't exist or is very rough. And then inevitably you're going to have partnership disputes. Investors won't want to touch you because they're afraid of other people. Exactly. Claims. You know, hey, no, I own this. No, I own this. Right. So I'd say the number one thing is make sure you clearly define who, who is a part of the project and who owns what. And what about like sort of the, the state paperwork and the incorporation and all yeah, that? Yeah, so of what? course, once you've created a business and you know who's who and you figure out who your partners are, you want to avoid personal liability, especially for the actions of the other partners. Got it. So it's important to get formally set up as either a corporation or an LLC. And the one you choose will depend on various right. issues like tax implications, management decision making, the flexibility of that decision making. So you want a lawyer and an accountant to set you up the uh, right one based right on way. yeah based on what else you got going on in life. Yeah. So t let me ask you this question: How soon after you know you got a business should you file this in uh, incorporation paperwork? Some people wait a if year. If it's just you and you're still kind of figuring it out, then the question you have to ask yourself is: What's my exposure to real liability? Got it. You know, am I selling greeting cards or am I doing something providing like a service that could really expose me to liability? Got it. Now, if you have a partner though, I would say you should immediately. immediately create an entity because then there is no ambiguity over who owns the work product that's developed. It's the company, not any okay. single person. So you got the, the paperwork, you got the contract. What else should a startup do today, given that you have so many years of experience choose and all the problems? Yeah, the next thing they should do is choose the name carefully. Got it. Uh, big mistake is that startups will invest a lot of time and energy developing goodwill in a brand only to get a cease and desist letter when they're on yeah. someone's radar <laughs> two or three years later. Absolutely. And then what happens, you split and you have a new partner and you have, mm -hmm. you're have you adding, you know, diluting the company, maybe an investor. Do you go back and redo all the contracts? Yes, you're going, I mean, every time you bring in a new partner, they're going to be, they have to also sign the prenup that is the operating agreement or the shareholder sure. agreement. And then everyone will have to get their own lawyer, most likely. Got and that's it. something you also have to understand. When three guys start a business and they hire a lawyer, the lawyer is not their independent attorney. Right. And if there's ever a dispute between those three They guys, need to get their own lawyers. Everyone's got to get their own lawyer. Um, so here's another thing that I'm actually in the process of working on is an acquisition. So if you're merging your thing with another product or a service that seems very similar, what what should somebody do in that start? Because you're still a startup, you're just trying to grow and then you acquire it. So if you're depend depends on how you're acquiring. Are you buying, is it an asset purchase? Yes, it's an asset. An asset purchase is a little easier for a, for a buyer than a stock sale, right? Yeah. Or a full blown, you're buying the business. Right. Because if you're buying the business, you're typically buying the business's liabilities right. as well as its assets. Right. Um, but with an, with, in either case, you need to do your due diligence. You need to make sure that the, the business you're buying is the business you're buying. You do, yeah. do they have proper records? Have they paid their taxes? And do they have partners? Do they, they have, have partners? Do they have employees that they need to be paying that they haven't? Are they in compliance with whatever state laws or federal laws that they need to be in compliance with? So it's, it's a matter of doing your homework before you by anybody else's assets. absolutely um so lots of startups fail um at which point like if it doesn't seem like it's going to work out what should somebody do before they start their next one while they have six other companies running maybe you like, want a you... clean divorce yeah. and i always use divorce and family laws and analogy because when you are in a fight with your business partner it can get nasty Got and it. even nastier than the nastiest divorces you've seen i've, I've had a case um, where people fought over a couch a, a couch in the office huh. for a year and a half you know so uh i would make sure that you very carefully just like when you got into bed with that person figure out who gets what asset got it if you can't that's another thing we go back to court for we say 
court, we've dissolved the LLC. Everyone agrees that they don't want to be partners anymore, but we can't decide who gets the trademark. We can't Got it. decide who gets the Xerox machine, whatever. Yeah. Uh, and then you may need judicial intervention to properly Got divide it. the assets. Um, what about you're buying your partner out? What happens? You already did all this stuff. You know, what if I have, I have a partner in one of my businesses and at some point he wants to exit and says, look, I'm good. I want to leave. What's the process? Well, do you have an operating agreement? The first thing you'll look at is the operating agreement. Got and it. the default provision in most of these agreements is that the, the person who's leaving, his or her shares will need to be purchased at the fair market value, whatever that, that rate is. is. So it's a whole valuation question. Valuation question. Some people will say, you know, I don't want to go through an expensive and costly valuation. We'll give you $50,000. We'll give you X thousand dollars. And, you know, you're cool with that. Other times, you know, you might say, hey, that's I when think... you're splitting the couch. <laughs> and the or you might say, you know, this business is, you know, if you do the valuation route, business is worth zero. Right. So I, I want you to give me, you know, and then you fight about it. But yeah, right. sometimes you bring in a third party auditor or you right. know accountant to give do the valuation for you other times you just agree got it um anything specific that you can shed light on a startup that's they're so excited they want to get started um but they don't know where to go anything else that they can watch out for or just do the thing that we just talked about i think just contract put it in got writing it. and review them regularly review them you know act like a business right Keep a separate bank account. Don't commingle funds. Got it. You know, a business is a separate entity from you. Act like it's a separate entity. Absolutely. I know you've been very busy, and thank you so much You're for welcome. your time. I really appreciate it. You're very welcome.